Hey there, fellow chocolate friends. It's Making Maria, your independent chocolate tour designer. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Jan. Hey, Verge. Welcome, everybody, to Pumpkins Part 2, the opposite side. We're going to the dark side, ladies. Ooh, you know what? I'm forgetting a transfer. Oh, there it is. Okay. Whew. Trying to get ready. I was forgetting stuff. So welcome everybody. I am Making Maria, your independent chalk couture designer. And we are going to do a beautiful demonstration this evening using these amazing products where we are going to take some really cute wooden pumpkin cutouts. And they're two-sided. We're going to take the flip side. We did one side last night in a Halloween theme. And then tonight we're going to flip them over. And we're going to do them more as a tr traditional pumpkin and uh, maybe try to sneak in a little Thanksgiving. I know, it's July and I'm already talking the holidays. But, you know, we got to plan early, ladies, right? Because these are super adorable. They're a really cute little gift. And I'm going to show them to you. Hey, Carol. Hey, Lisa. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so let me show you our cute little pumpkin, guys. So these are the pumpkin guys we made last night. So we have our cute little Let's Get Wicked in our purple pumpkin. This is a 10 inch pumpkin, wood cutout, he sits up. And then we took a chalkable chip, which is a white chalkboard, which you can actually chalk on both sides. And uh, we put a hole in it and we made this super cute little tag for our cute little purple pumpkin. And then we took our apple slash pumpkin. My son interrupted us last night and it was green at that point and he told me it looked like an apple. And it did kind of look like an apple. So now it looks like more like a pumpkin. But I do say I am regretting not doing some orange in here as well. So I may put another stripe line in here of orange. But again, we did a design patterned transfer on chocolate chips oops, that you can do on both sides and um, put on a little ribbon. So what I do with my ribbons when it's a double sided project and I know I want to be able to use the other side so I don't really want to hot glue my ribbon on. I just crisscross it on the back and stick a piece of tape on it and then it's really easy to take your doohickey off. Christmas Eve is five months from today. <gasps> Debbie you're so right. Oh my, see, it's not too early. <laughs> it is not too early to be pulling out the old Christmas stuff. Five months from today. Ooh, I better get busy making stuff. Holy cow. Well, now Christmas should just come out of the woodwork, right? Everywhere we're going to be doing Christmas. So these really cute little wooden pumpkins. We're now, tonight we're going to chalk on the other side so that you could have a piece of holiday decor in your home that... You know, when you invest your time and energy into something, I like to leave it out for more than three weeks. And I would say three weeks is the average amount of time I would put a piece of holiday decor out before the holiday. I'm not decorating for Christmas the first week of November. I have a strict, we do not decorate for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. And even then, it's probably a weekend into December before we're decorating. Same thing for Thanksgiving and Halloween. Halloween, I do decorate. I probably decorate for Halloween the first week of October. And then um, there's a, per a set of ceramic pumpkins that sit in my fireplace. Once I put those out, they stay out through Thanksgiving. Um, but otherwise, my rest of my Halloween stuff gets put away. And I don't really do much decorating for Thanksgiving. This year, however, we're changing that because I'm going to have these adorable little pumpkins that are going to be Halloween on one side. And then I'm going to be able to flip over and they're going to have a lovely Thanksgiving sentiment on the other side. So this is the patterns that come with our cute pumpkins. And we used these two last night and tonight we're going to use these two. And we're going to do them more in a traditional, you know, pink, or not pink, although you could have a pink pumpkin, a more uh, traditional orange for Thanksgiving because I think Thanksgiving isn't really all about wild colors. I think Thanksgiving is way more about pink or er, orange. <laughs> Traditional. Um, where I think with Halloween you can get totally crazy with your colors um, and have a good time with it. 
So our trick to this is our transfers go in one direction and our pumpkins go in the opposite direction because we are doing the opposite side. So what the heck am I talking about? I'm talking about transfers and paste and uh, all kinds of stuff. So what am I talking about? I am talking about Chalk Couture, which is an amazing company that is chalking the halls, walls, accents, and accessories of homes across America. It was created to be designed, loved, and repeated for every season and any reason. And we bring easy, high-end DIY home decor directly to you. And we do that by offering reusable adhesive silkscreen transfers, Chalkology Paste, which is chalk paste, which is what we're going to use tonight, Couture Ink, which is permanent when you heat set it so you can put things in the washing machine, you can put things in the dishwasher, um, and continue to love it over and over again so it is permanent. Surfaces, like our cute little pumpkin cutouts that we're going to use this evening, accessories, squeegees, all that good stuff, all of it is for the sole purpose of making crafting easy, easy, and stress-free. So that is what Chalk Couture is. I happen to be an independent Chalk Couture designer, which means I have the ability to sell you the products as well as purchase them myself at a discount, which is super fun. As a designer, I have lots of options as to how I choose my to handle my designership. Um, I can teach classes. I can do in-home parties. I can do in-home workshops. I can um, have make and takes in my home and do a lot of fundraisers. So you can do with your designership whatever you want to do. You, um, there's no rules about how you do it. Some people just become a designer because they want the discount. And uh, that's perfectly fine too. But being a chalk couture designer is an amazing experience. I have met so, so many wonderful people. It's a really, really nice community. So if you have any interest or any desire to just even just get some information about what the heck that means for you, and if that's something you think you would enjoy doing, please feel free to message me, and I would be happy to send you information that you can take a look at and see if it's something that uh, would benefit you or your family. So if you could please share my video, um, that helps me tremendously when you do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing my video. And let's get to chalking and less talking this evening. So I did have an idea. I'm sorry, you can't see my project anymore. I did have an idea about our cute little pumpkins that I'm realizing I don't think I have it in here. But I was thinking, you know those like twinkle fairy lights? I was thinking it might be kind of fun to wrap one of our pumpkins in twinkle fairy lights. So I may have to run and grab some twinkle fairy lights to show them to you. But in the meantime, while I'm thinking about, you know, how much dead air do you guys really want? Um, hey, Linda, Linda, welcome to our chalking party. Um, we really need to think about colors. So when I think about a pumpkin, um, we have a, a color from last year, which is called pumpkin pie, which is a very nice pumpkin pie color. We have a new color this year called papaya, and I would tell you, hmm, they look mysteriously the same, don't they? Um, papaya is just slightly more of a rust color, and pumpkin pie is just slightly more orange, I would say. We also have orange peel. Oh, put them on their side. We also have orange peel. So when you, I mean, you can see the difference between the two, but it's very subtle. Make them start rolling. Um, orange peel is definitely more your, you know, kind of traditional orange. So I don't, I think we want to do the pumpkins in orange, but I don't know if they should be the same orange. Or if I should do a variation of, you know, the one, the lighter orange and the darker orange. The other thought I had was we could use the new curry, which is kind of this mustardy dark yellow. Um, this is a very pretty, pretty color. And I don't think it's a very nice uh, Thanksgiving color. So this might not be a bad option as well to do maybe pumpkin pie and curry. Um, when I think of the pumpkin, those ceramic pumpkins I was talking about that I put in my fireplace that stay in my fireplace all year, 
One is kind of a curry color and one is, there's three of them, but two of them are curry and one of them is pumpkin pie. So that might not be a bad choice. Or we could just stick with traditional orange. So what do you guys think? What color should we do? And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick a word on one of our pumpkins and the word we're going to use is grateful. And then it's just a matter of which pumpkin to put it on. So this is a trio. It is called the Harvest Trio. The company comes out with lots of trios. And these are super nice little transfers that have tons and tons of uses. And tomorrow night we're going to talk about the trios as Thankful Thursday. Because we give free stuff away on Thankful Thursday. And the trios are a very nice um, thing to do with Thankful Thursday. Lisa, hey Lisa, welcome to our chalk and party. She likes pumpkin pie and curry. Cool. So we're going to talk about our, th uh, we have several different transfers that have the three pieces. Tonight we're going to use grateful on just one of the two pumpkins. So we really just need to decide which pumpkin to put the word on. And I think it's going to be the bigger one because it fits better on the bigger one. Um, and then pick our colors. So I've not used curry yet, so I'm not really sure what color it is. I mean, obviously I, I can see the color, but um, it's definitely a mustardy. Ooh, Linda Linda agrees with Lisa. Okay, we'll try it. You know, if we don't like it, we'll wash it off. So there's a trick that we're going to use for putting our word on our transfer. So I think... I think we're going to stick with pumpkin pie just because I want to use it up and it's so close to um, papaya. I, they're very close to being the same color. <laughs> so I think we're, I want to use up my pumpkin pie, so we're going to use that. So I'm going to pull up my handy dandy pretty little fancy scissors, my transfer trimmer, um, and I'm going to just cut out my grateful. all you do. You cut your transfers apart. They have uh, cut lines on them, which is actually a silk screen. So you do want to, if you're ever going to uh, chalk it where it's all one instead of cutting it apart, just be conscious of those are silk screen lines. So if you don't want the line, you don't chalk over it. Um, but I'm thinking, oh, won't that be adorable? If we do this guy and then this guy in polka dots with the curry. Let's do it that way. We'll do these two colors. I think that will be pretty. Okay, so our biggest trick is what the heck to do about our little guy because it's kind of a problem so there's two things you could do well there's more than two but the two that we're going to discuss this evening are I could I'll show you when you take your transfer off of your backer sheet first you write on the back of it this is I'm gonna call it the berry pumpkin just because I don't know what the design is but they look like little berries to me So see, I mean, I don't know what else you would call those little dot things, but they look like berries to me. So you write the name of your transfer on the back of your backer sheet. And you do that for two reasons. The first reason is you want to know which side is the back of your sheet because there are two very distinct sides to your backer sheet. The other reason is it helps you put your transfers away because you um, know which transfer goes on which backer sheet. It's just a an ease of cleaning up. <laughs> So, I have laid my transfer out. It is sticky side up at the moment. And I'm going to take my fuzzing towel and I'm going to stick it to it. Now, what the heck is a fuzzing towel? It's a fancy towel. Um, it's a very nice fancy towel that I absolutely positively love um, because it's very uh, uh, purposefully made to be the size of that work well with transfers versus sometimes it's, it's kind of a pain to try to maneuver a big... Uh, towel, but what I'm doing is when you fuzz you stick your transfer to something that has lint so a t-shirt a sweater your blue jeans your bathrobe your towel um, Something that it can pick up a little bit of the lint because then your transfer does not stick as hard to your surface um, And then it doesn't have to work as hard so when I stick my little pumpkin guy on here. See, well actually this doesn't really work that bad. I mean it's not. 
it's not ideal because the curve of the pumpkin is clearly not the same on this side as it is on the other side. <laughs> That's interesting. It curves more on one, it's more of a straight curve on one side than the other. So you just kind of line it up to cover up your pumpkin. Because you just want to make sure that your whole pumpkin is covered. So when I do this, um, I'm just laying it down. And because I'm doing the reverse, that's why I'm having an issue. If I wasn't doing the reverse, I would not be having an issue. It would just go right down. But I want to get it on here so that I cover up as much of the pumpkin as I can. And with this particular guy, I don't think it's going to be as big of an issue that my stem, because uh, it'll still have a design on the stem. The key is, am I covering up enough of my pumpkin that I'm not going to end up with a white line around my pumpkin? Because, again, I'm doing the reverse. So that's one way I could solve the problem. The other way I could solve the problem is, oh, look at that. <laughs> I could lay the transfer down sticky side up. But what that means is my transfer is not stuck whatsoever to my surface. You can chalk this way. You can chalk with the reverse. You just have to be super careful because it's going to move every time you move your fingers. I would not recommend this on something this size. I would totally do it if it was a little flower or a little leaf. But if I do it this way, it lines up perfectly and I could chalk away. I am not going to do it that way. I'm going to live with the fact that I might have a white line <laughs> on this side because um, I need the stick to get the amazing detail that I want from the design. So. That is why I'm going to do it this way. If you want to live on the edge and do it the other way, have at it, ladies. So I'm just going to see if I can get it pulled over enough on this side that I don't end up, so I'll show you so that you can see. So see, when I come to this side, I have space. But when I'm on this side, I don't. So I have this little tiny edge here that's gonna be white. So I can solve that problem in more than one way. I could simply, when I pull it up, take a paintbrush to it and paint it the orange. I can feel the air in this bad boy. I could just paint the orange, or yeah, this one. Wait, this one we're doing orange? Yeah, this one we're doing orange. I could simply paint the orange color on. That would be one option. The other option is I can relay down my transfer and just, because I want the smoothness, that's the problem when you use a paintbrush is it's not always smooth because it gets kind of gloppy. But when you want the smooth slickness of your silk screen, then you just lay down a silk screen and then you can still get that. Because I am going to have, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna put, try putting it more at an angle here and seeing if I can get more of it covered up versus less of it. Let's try it there. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I'm gonna try it this way and see. I'll still end up with some of the design on my stem, but my, my little tip of my stem is going to end up white, which I can solve. That's an easier solve than trying to do with the whole edge of my transfer. Okay, so. I'm rubbing all my air out of my silk screen to make sure that I have a smooth surface. And I'm going to open up my pumpkin pie, which is hiding on me. I open up my pumpkin pie. Beautiful color. Just a beautiful, deep, rusty orange. Um, I'm going to, ooh very look at this guy he is dry this is because oh i get to use my new mister oh ladies <laughs> look at this cute little oops look at this cute little bad boy uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah he miss he doesn't spray 
<laughs> I just had a class the other day, and I went to put water in my paste. And you know how I say I put too much, and then I got, I had paste everywhere. Watch, check this out. <gasps> It's the little things in life, ladies. <laughs> so this guy is super dry because I, I haven't probably used this since Thanksgiving. It's definitely been a while. So I'm just going to add some water and stir. And then I'm going to add some water and stir. So I'm just going to mm, oh, mist this. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think that a spray bottle would be so much fun but holy cow a spray bottle you know and I I'll be honest ladies this is an investment this little mister guy that I did kind of do a really <laughs> it's a spray bottle <laughs> did you see that misting it is not a spray bottle holy cow it is beautifulness and then when I was reading some reviews on it the other day and I was reading about how when you put your paste down, you know, and it dries, you can now mist it and reactivate the chalk. We're going we're gonna to experiment with that. We're just not going to do that on these pretty pumpkins because um, it, it's called an experiment, and I'm not sure how it's going to work out. So we'll do that on a board that I can wash off. These pumpkins are really a one-time use surface. So I'm just adding my chalk or my water, and I'm stirring it. Now, I have a lot more work to do because I can feel that I have more um, chalk on the bottom that's hard. But I know that if I add water to this and I let it sit and then I start tomorrow, all of that will be soft again. Now who's giving me an angry face? What's the, what does the angry face do? Cool, all right, so I'm stirring away. I'm gonna add a little more. Missed a ah! <laughs> I know. It's the little things, ladies, I'm telling you. It's the little things. All right, so I'm stirring up my, my paste. is all good. So now I know going out of the gate, I'm a little off. I'm a little cockeyed. I know, you're all surprised. Maria's cockeyed, right? Don't be. <gasps> the new grandma is watching us. Okay, so I have a friend. A wonderful friend, I have to say. Um, a very, very wonderful friend who became a grandma today for the very first time. So congratulations, Grandma. How does it feel? Oh my gosh, I can only imagine how that feels. All right, so I'm going to put our little grateful guy right over the other transfer. Now, it's a little deceiving because my other transfer is not straight so I want this to be straight so I just stick this other transfer right over and then this part of the transfer becomes a mask and I'm going to end up with a white you know rectangle I do want to hold him up and make sure he is actually straight he's actually a little high so this is one of those tricks that you can use to get yourself a um, that white space that we like to do on stuff. He's still a little high. I need to bring him down a little bit. It's the sneaky wiggy. Oh, Grandma says it's weird to say the word Grandma out loud, but I can't wait till Friday when I can hold him. Oh, you didn't get to hold him yet. Oh. You're, I just babies are an amazing thing, aren't they? They bring such joy, such hope, such promise, right? He's a big baby too. He was over nine pounds. That poor mama. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling sorry for her. <laughs> That's a big. My babies were five pounds. That's because they were all a month early. But I cannot imagine pushing out a nine-pound baby. Holy sh! Snowlies. That's a big baby. <laughs> All right, so I'm all, that's not going to work, right? I can't... What am I thinking? This is not going to work because I have this stuff underneath. I got to put this on the other. <laughs> Makes you wonder about me, doesn't it? All right, so what I need to do is I need to put this underneath. 
Otherwise, I'm going to get the design in my word. And I don't want that. Okay, so it actually makes it easier to line up. And they smell, I write, Carol, they smell so good. And then they snuggle and they're cute. And then they grow up to be teenagers. <laughs> but when they're tiny and they're cute and they smell good, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> then they grow up. Mm -hmm. And then they're so much fun to talk to because they have such interesting opinions about the world. <laughs> She's doing great. She loved her epidural. Oh, yeah. I let my oldest grandbaby drive today. Oh, wow. Now that will give you some gray hair for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about gray hair, Debbie. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Babies are just awesome. Okay, so now I have my word on the correct side. He's underneath. So I'm going to chalk this over it, pull it off, and then chalk the grateful word. So grateful is going to be the same color as the pumpkin. If I wanted to make it a different color, the way to solve that problem is just put your backer sheet underneath it. Take your backer sheet out and then put the word on it. So you can do it either way, both of which work. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl's daughter is getting married. So she doesn't, pretty soon maybe she could be a grandma too. We're talking grandbabies today, Cheryl. Because one of our, our faithful watchers became a grandma today for the very first time. Okay, I think I am going to do that. I'm just going to slide this in here. I'm going to leave the grateful on, but I'm just going to slide this in. Just so that I, don't, I can do the word all by itself. So the backer sheet sticks to your transfer. I'm just, I'm just going to stick that in there. And then you can wash your paste right off of your transfer backer sheet. A nine-pound baby, too, Cheryl. Big baby. Holy cow. That's a big baby. All right, so I'm just pushing all my design down. And I'm ready to chalk away. So I have my chalk paste all stirred up. I'm going to do mist one more time. That's so cool. I'm going to mist one more time. Give it one more stir. Cheryl says, as much as I would love to be a grandma, I'm guessing and hoping for their sakes that it takes a little bit. <laughs> so Cheryl's daughter is going to school. She has a lot more school left. So yeah, we don't want to be a grandma yet. She's, she has to focus on her education first. Let's get her married. Then we can talk grandbabies. Okay, so getting all my stuff pushed down and we're ready to go. I grab my small squeegee. Now, when you go to squeegee your chalk paste on your uh, surface, your squeegee has two sides to it, and it has an angle. This is the front of the squeegee. The flat side is the back, in my opinion. People squeegee all kinds of different ways. It doesn't really matter, but that's how I view it. I hold my fingers down all the way, and then when I squeegee, it gives me really good resistance. I don't hold it up here because then it gets floppy, and you don't get as, as smooth of a squeegee. So hold your squeegee down towards the bottom. I'm going to dip and go. There's two ways that you can apply your paste to your project. You can dip and go, which is put your squeegee in your paste and dip and go. Or you can dollop. Thank you, Carol. We can dollop. Do Carol gave us the word of dolloping. You can dollop your paste on by just blobbing it on. Either way, there's no right or wrong way. You just do it the way that you feel comfortable doing it. But once you put paste on, the clock starts ticking, so you have to pay attention. This is a lot of screen space. So you really need to um, move relatively quickly. So see, I dip all, and I there's a lot of paste on here. I'm not worried about having too much because I squeegee it all off. So I'm being careful when I go around my uh, mask and I'm going in the opposite direction of my mask. So I'm not, you know, pushing the chalk underneath my mask. Okay. So I got that and now I can just go right around it. This is a beautiful color. 
beautiful color. It's a very nice traditional orange for Halloween, or I'm sorry, for Thanksgiving and Halloween. I'm gonna move my project over. I would say that is one of the challenges to these pumpkins is there's no place to hold <laughs> without getting your fingers full of paste. So again, I've got my uh, squeegee. Let me push it up so you can see. I've got my squeegee like this and I'm getting all that excess paste right off and then I can just move it where I need to go. Okay, we're gonna do my bottom section and then we're gonna pull it off and we're gonna have a rectangle, a white rectangle in the middle you know what, maybe we'll do the word grateful in the curry so that then that will tie the two pumpkins together more. So I know I'm gonna have some white spaces on this pumpkin because again, I've done my transfer in reverse. So I'm all ready to pull it off. I did however stick my finger in the paste so I have a very orange finger and I wanna get that off my finger before I touch my white pumpkin because it will come off. Not that it doesn't wash off, but Ooh, he's so cute. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So I just pull my transfer right off, like so. Take my mask out. My word is in there. I take this. I'm just going to set it aside because we have some, some white fill-in to do, right? So I'm going to set it down, sticky side up, right next to me. But it does have paste on it, so it will um, get paste on the underside, so don't set it on something that you don't want paste on. Okay, so now I just wipe off my backer sheet because I need to put my transfer back on my backer sheet when I'm done. Okay, so that's how you can use, your backer sheets really have many purposes. I've done backer sheets, well, you've seen me do backer sheets where I've cut them into shapes so that our um, mask was a, a specific shape that I wanted it to be. Backer sheets can be very useful. So now I need to dry our transfer, or our chalk. The only reason I'm drying it right now is because I don't want to stick my finger in it. So this little guy is super cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, he's not completely dry. I don't really want to dry this transfer. I don't want to heat up the transfer. Okay, so now we have this very cute pumpkin with a white, half a white um, spout. <laughs> What's that? It's not a cork. Stem! <laughs> we have half a white stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm really going to make sure this is dry up here. And I'm going to lay my transfer down. And I'm going to be sneaky about it. Because I really just want solid silk screen. I don't want any of the uh, berries, for lack of a better word of what to call them. So I'm going to find a spot in my transfer here, like right here, that is just silk screen. So then I can just squeegee over this one section and I'll have my smooth uh, texture but I don't have another berry, okay? This squeegee is too big. I need a smaller squeegee. Okay. Now I should. I might have covered up our little berry a little bit. There we go. So now I just have a solid, it's a different color right now because it's not dry where the rest of it's dry. And I need to get this little spot right here. I didn't get him very well. Okay. And there's another little spot. So now I move to my paintbrush. Where I just very gently fill it in with a little paintbrush. And then voila. I'm gonna dry it. So now it'll be this, the right color. <laughs> It will be a little bit darker because it's probably more thick than the rest of the pumpkin. So now I have my little guy. He's the right, he's not completely dry, but he's the right color now. At least he's not white. So now we're going to do our grateful. 
And we're going to do it in our beautiful new curry color. Ugh. <laughs> it's funny that we're talking about babies today because guess what this looks like? gonna leave that one alone but you can all those of you that have babies have, or have had babies you know what that color looks like mm -hmm. yes you do <laughs> so now I take my squeegee hey Mary welcome to our talking oh I didn't stir this welcome to our talking party Mary we are ha talking babies tonight Mary so I'm gonna take this really pretty color I'm gonna stir it up this is a gorgeous consistency this buys guy's brand new he's all ready to go he's gorgeous oh my gosh this is a pretty color okay and I'm just gonna dip my squeegee and go Boop. just like that and we're gonna have this beautiful word in the middle of our pumpkin voila and then we pull them out We have our great faux pumpkin. I can stick this right in my water bath. I'm gonna dry it, so I stick my finger in it. It's a really pretty color. Okay, so here's our great faux pumpkin. Look how cute that looks with our gratefulness. Voila. So we have grateful on one side, which will stand very nicely. Of our grateful pumpkin standing on one side and then on the other side we have our which one was on here this one was on here we have our Halloween so you have two sides and two completely different pieces of home decoration so this one's grateful okay I'm gonna try not to make you seasick bring you back up Alright, so now let's work on our polka dot guy. This is so cute. I love the detail in this transfer. It's a very pretty transfer. Super pretty. And the yellow is just slightly different. I mean, it's yellow. It's, I would say it's kind of a burnt gold color. A burnt yellow. But they go really well together. So that's pumpkin number one. Pumpkin number two is our apple. He's not gonna look like an apple with polka dots on him. So we have the same problem with our pump or our polka dot guy, is our transfer goes in the opposite direction. So I just dropped my fuzzing cloth on the floor. I take my transfer off. I take my fuzzing cloth. Oh, I'm gonna like this color. We're gonna use this color a lot this fall. Take my fuzzing cloth, and I'm gonna fuzz. Hey, Michaela! Oh my goodness, Michaela! Welcome, welcome, welcome from Minnesota. Eh? I think that's where you are now, Michaela. Welcome from Minnesota. I'm just fuzzing my transfer. We're talking tonight, Michaela. We're talking uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving decorations for your home decor and I I think you got yourself a new apartment didn't you or house did you guys buy a house I've been seeing pictures of new stuff so I'm thinking you might need some new holiday decor Michaela so again we're doing this on the opposite side so it's all backwards but all we really need to worry about is a polka dot right I just I'm gonna need to make sure that my little spot of my little stem has color because it's white so I'm gonna line them up he's not lined up right and again they're not gonna line up perfectly when you're doing the reverse side because there's different angles and things to your pumpkin but you can get him pretty darn close so what I'm gonna try on this one just for giggle's sake is I'm going to actually try I'm not gonna do the stem at all and then I'm going to see if when it's time to try to just color it in, if I can um, just put some random polka dots on it. 
it might be easier. So I'm just pushing out all my air. I'm not going to do this stem, and I want to remind myself that I'm not going to do this stem because once I start chalking, you know, I'm going to forget. So I just tell myself to stop. So I'm just pushing out all my air, making sure all my little dots are stuck down so they don't get a bleed. When you have a transfer like this where you have so much screen space and such detail in your design, take the time to really push down every single one. You know, it seems like you shouldn't necessarily need to do that, but you do. So make sure you do. And again, I'm just going to dip and go. I'm going to hold my squeegee, dip it in my paste, and I'm just going to go to town. Oh, this is a beautiful color. If you don't think of it in the baby world, <laughs> it's a beautiful color. <laughs> Where's Joe? Joe needs to tell me it's an apple again. Now he's going to tell me it's a golden delicious apple or something. Okay, so I am squeegeeing across, getting my chalk paste all evenly with no lines on my cute little pumpkin. So I just smooth out my lines, just like so. Take all my excess, put it right back in my container, and I'm just going to pull my trans. Oh! Come out! Look at how cute he is. Okay, so now there's nothing on my stem. So I'm gonna dry it, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna try to do it on this side. But I really want to dry it because I don't want to smear it when I go to lay my transfer back down. And it doesn't take long to dry. Just like that, we're dry. Okay, so on this guy, for our little stem, I'm just gonna line it up on the edge, just like he would have been. Okay, first I need to wipe it off. I can't see what I'm doing. Just wiping off all that excess paste. I have I have paste everywhere tonight, ladies. I love these little pumpkins. So as I said last night about the pumpkins, I am concerned that the pumpkins will sell out. I'm not concerned that they're going to sell out right now. But what I learned last year was as the holidays get closer, things tend to get ordered more. So that's why I'm worried about the pumpkins, is as we get closer to the holiday, uh, everybody will go crazy and everybody will want to do the pumpkins and then they're gonna sell out. So I am going to do some workshops with our cute little pumpkins. So if you want to do a workshop with our cute little pumpkins, you just need to let me know and we can do an in-home workshop where I come to your house and you get some friends together and we all do pumpkins or you can, um, we're going to do it, we're going to try our first virtual workshop where we basically order the supplies, ship them to your house, and then we all get online and we create our pumpkins together. Okay, so now what I did was I lined up, let me try this, right, zoom you in. Okay, so see here, I lined up these, I covered up the dots that were here. And now I have a straight shot. So I should be able to even fix my little line here. And this should work perfectly to get my stem the way I wanted it. Because again, we're doing the opposite side of the pumpkin. So I'm just going to go over my edge here. And then over the stem. And then, because I have our dots lined up, in theory, <laughs> in theory this should work, right? So what I did was I washed the bottom line off, which gave me my straight line, and then I just lined it up, and voila. 
Now again, they're two different colors at the moment because it's wet. When it dries, they'll be the same color. So I just give it a quick dry. And voila! You would never know. I'm gonna zoom you back out. You would never know that our little pumpkin was the reverse and we didn't have a full transfer to cover it up. So we got it all covered up. So we have our super cute curry, kind of fallish, and then we have our gorgeous grateful. So these are the two opposite, oops, sorry, can't see them. <laughs> these are our two opposite pumpkins that go together. We did the grateful in the same curry color, so they blend well, very well together. We can very nicely put a bow if you want to uh, zhuzh them up even more. Or we could do a chocolate chip, very similar to how we did for the opposite side for our Halloween. Except don't be dumb like Maria and have paste on your board when you flip it over. Okay, so we also have our cute little... So you, you do it this way, you leave it up for all of Halloween, then you just take this off, and now you flip her over, and you're good to go for Thanksgiving. We've got our cute little Happy Halloween, and I am going to add, I'm going to try adding orange to this and see, because I do think he needs, he needs some traditional orange on him, I do feel. He's cute in the black and the green, but he does still... Thank you, my beautiful son, Joseph. He still does kind of look like an apple. And then we have our beautiful, beautiful curry color on the opposite side. So right now, I got if I had to vote, this is my favorite side. What side is your favorite side? And the other thing I think we should do is I think we should wrap this in twinkle lights. So while you vote, I'm going to quickly grab twinkle lights. So you guys vote. Which side is your favorite side? when you have two different rooms. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. So I have these really cute little twinkle lights that I was thinking, especially when we get to the Christmas tree ones. Verge says the Thanksgiving. Cheryl says the Thanksgiving. I agree. So I have these, you know, twinkle lights. Okay. So when we get to the Christmas tree ones, and we're going to do basically the same thing with the Christmas tree ones, I think we should definitely wrap the Christmas tree ones in them. Oh, everybody's saying Thanksgiving. Now, this could be, you know, you could just do this side and leave it out for Halloween, too. Ooh, Carol likes them both. Okay, so what I was thinking was, and we'd probably want to start at the, I guess we should, we should probably start at the bottom, right, and work our way up? No. Yep. We're going to start, because my thought was you could easily, if you only did one side especially, we could easily tape this on the bottom. I'm gonna get rid of all this excess that doesn't have lights on it. And just kind of go around your pumpkin. Now I'm just going around it randomly at the moment. But these are those cute little fairy lights that you get at the, you can get them at the holidays, you can get them all year. You can get them everywhere. Everywhere seems to have them. Okay, so I am wrapping it around the back so that it holds on the battery pack. Okay. Can you see? So he's kind of... It's a little rough just because I'm trying to do it in a hurry. Um, but you're going to get the idea of what I mean. I don't know if you can see the lights. You know, you just kind of wrap it up with some really pretty fairy lights. And then he's even zhuzhier. And you don't have to, you know, go, all, you know, in a straight line across it. You can totally, I mean, I want the word. Okay, 
You know what I mean, right? Are you going with where I'm going? You could start on the bottom and le leave some hang off the stem like a vine. <gasps> Carol, you are so darn smart. Yes, you could totally do that. Okay, so I'm going to set him down real quick and try to do this. Where I'm not trying to hold it up in the air at the same time so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, this is cute. Okay. So, here you go. So I, I think you can see the lights. But you just, you know, kind of spread them around. Get them where you want them. So that you have lights where you want lights. And just wrap them up. And I think on the Christmas tree ones, the little twinkle lights will be really cool. So these are my, my light ideas. And again, the lights are not perfect, but you, you, you're, you're catching my drift on what you could do with the cute little lights. And then you have a, a, a holiday decor piece. This would be beautiful in a tablescape, right? In the middle of your Thanksgiving table. And then you don't have to buy a plant that I can't keep alive. You don't have to buy fresh flowers that you're going to throw away in a week and feel horrible because you spent all that money on beautiful fresh flowers. And yet you have a beautiful statement piece in the middle of your Thanksgiving table. And you have a, sp and again, this is rough, but you have a spookier pumpkin that's even more zhuzhed up now. So you can totally add pieces to your cute little pumpkins that make them even more adorable. Linda says it would be cute with jute around the stem and string fall colored beads on the end of the jute ends. Yes. See, there's all kinds of fun ways to play with these fun little $12 pumpkins, right? This could be the best value fall wise in the catalog. These adorable little $12 pumpkins. But I am worried. I know I keep saying that. I am worried as we get closer to the holiday that they will be gone. So I am ordering them now just to make sure that I have the peace of mind of I show you these beautiful things and then you want to make them and then you can't make them. That was my experience last year. Um, they've solved most of those uh, issues this year already. So I'm not as worried about it as I was last year. But this is super cute. I'm going to turn the lights off for a minute so you can really see it. Does that work better for you to see? Oh, Jesus, I'm sliding on transfer paper. So see the cute little lights? It's just, I love the lights. I'm so glad I was laying in bed and thinking about lights. <laughs> this is super cute. So these are our adorable two-sided Halloween and Thanksgiving pumpkins. They're $12.99 for the pumpkins. They come with two. It's a 10 inch and a six inch pumpkin. The background pattern pumpkin, the four patterns, four patterns for the pumpkin are a D size transfer and D size transfers are $29.99, right? Yes. Let me just confirm that. D sizes are $29.99. So it's a D size. I just want to confirm that D's are $29.99. I get D's and E's mixed up all the time. Yep, D. It's a D. So it's $29.99 for the patterns. And then the next project we're going to do is we're going to take these patterns and make a completely separate surface with them where we're going to do just the patterns on a board and make its own beautiful design that's on a board. These are also really cute on a tea towel. This little six inch guy especially it would be adorable on a tea towel. And then some of the, you know, the grateful word or there's a transfer from last year that says thankful and so blessed. Many of you have that transfer. Um, that one would be super cute. And you could just do the pumpkin on a, a towel. And I've got some cute um, Thanksgiving towels with a pattern on them already too. So we've got lots of choices on what we could do that make these two uh, items valuable. So it's not just, oh my gosh, I'm buying a $30 transfer and I can only do one thing with it. You have lots and lots of, of options and opportunities to use it. Plus, 
their patterns, so you don't have to do them on a pumpkin. If your, your surface was smaller than your pumpkin, you could even, you could put this on a Christmas tree. You could put this on anything and chalk it. So it does have, it, it does have some really good value to it in my opinion. But these little pumpkin guys, we're going to have a lot of fun with. And the Christmas trees. So if you want these and you want to be part of either the in-home workshop where I bring these and your friends make them. And if you want to message me on the pricing of an in-home workshop, you probably want to message me because we're going to do those a little bit differently um, than the retail pricing of the purchasing of the transfers. It's going to be a little more... Reasonable, I guess, is the best word I can use. Reasonable is not the right word because it's reasonable the way it is. Um, a little, I don't even know how to explain it. Message me if you want to do a workshop um, so that I can explain to you how a workshop works. Typically how an in-home workshop works is you pick a project. So it doesn't have to be pumpkins. It can be anything. You pick a project. You get your friends together. I come to your house. And we make the project together. Most in-home workshops you don't purchase the transfers for you use my transfers some purchase the transfers because they want to own the transfers it's up to you so if you want to just make pumpkins and not buy the transfer there is an in-home workshop that we do that in if you want to purchase the transfers there's an in-home workshop that we do that so I'm pretty flexible with in-home workshops so if you want to have one let me know because um, my calendar is filling up believe it or not already for the fall because craft fair season for me is starting as well so, I'm rambling. Shocking surprise, I know. These are, I love these pumpkins. Oh my gosh, I love these pumpkins. So, I'm making Maria. I'm your independent chalk couture designer. Thank you so much for watching me. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Thankful Thursday. And on Thankful Thursday, we make a project, we share the project, and if the project gets shared 10 times, we give stuff away. So, Watch me tomorrow because we'll have some fun. And if it, if we share the video 10 times while we're watching it, I'll actually do the giveaway while we're watching it. If I have to do it the next day, I do it the next day if needed. Um, but usually if we get to 10, we get to 10 while we're watching it. So watch me tomorrow about 9 o'clock tomorrow night. We're going to make a fun project and we're going to give stuff away. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I am making Maria, your independent chalk couture designer. You all have a lovely evening, and I will be back at you tomorrow night around 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Message me if you want to do the workshop before I forget. Thank you. Bye.